Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a destructible mesh inside your game so that when you shoot it, the mesh breaks or explodes or however you want. And you can use this on any static mesh you like. It doesn't have to be a set one that you have to download and be any. You just repeat the steps and then maybe change a few things for different meshes. Now I'm going to be using the default cube that comes with Unreal Engine. So if you just to find this, you just click on the cube that's already in and then click on this little magnifying glass on the right here under the static mesh. And that will take you to it. Or if you don't have any in your game, but you still want to use this, go to content, geometry, meshes and then the cube there. Now what we want to do from this is create a destructible mesh. So to do that, we're going to go into edit up at the top left up here, then down to plugins, and we're going to search for apex destruction and just tick enabled like this. And then we're going to have to restart our engine. So I've just restarted mine. And then when you come back in, it shouldn't take too long, you just close this, right click on the cube. So it's 1M underscore cube or whatever you want, whatever mesh you want, and right click and go up to the top and create destructible mesh like so. It's that easy and it should open up a new window with that static mesh in, like so. It may take a few seconds to load, but there you go. And then once we're here, we're going to want to change the damage threshold, which is the amount of damage you need to break the cube or the object. So I'm going to set mine to 25,000, I think, quite a good one. And the damage spread is how far over the object you want it to go. So if you want it to break the whole thing or just where you shoot it. So point one will be more a fracture point. So for example, on a hard surface like wood or concrete or something, it will just break where you shoot it. Or if you want it to break the whole object, like glass wood, when you shoot it, it smashes all of it. So I'm just gonna set it to all of it just to show you. So I'll set it to one for the moment. And then we also want to enable impact damage, which means when something collides with this object, it will cause damage. And the impact damage, I'm gonna to set to one as well. And then the rest will leave as it is. Then off of debris, we're gonna to wanna to change the lifetime so that it will despawn afterwards so that it doesn't just create a load of meshes in your game which will affect performance. And this is in seconds. So the minimum I'm gonna have as five seconds and maximum I'll set as 15. So anywhere between 5 and 15 seconds is when it will despawn. And again, I'm going to leave the others as they are. So then we're going to want to go down to flags. So click off that and scroll down to flags like so. And we're going to want to take accumulate damage, meaning that if the first time you shoot it or damage it, doesn't break it, it will remember that damage and not reset it back to zero. So it basically has a health bar like a player would. And then you also want to tick debris timeout, meaning that the debris will actually despawn between those times. And after this, you're gonna scroll down to the hierarchy depth like so, and just tick enable debris. And I'm gonna set debris depth to one. As you see, you have pre preview depth up here. This basically means that the debris will spawn outside of this shell, not on the inside meaning it will explode out and not in. And again, leave the rest as they are. And then under the fracture settings below all of this, we've got the Voronoi or the Voronoi, however you pronounce it, I'm not sure. I'll leave as 25. And then the general, you can set a random seed to any number you want. I'm just gonna set mine to five. And this just means that it will explode in a random way, different each time. So if you set it to five, it'll be different to four or to eight or 10, whatever. So this is just up to you. Pick any number you want, doesn't matter. I'm just gonna have minus five. It's just so that each one explodes differently. And then to test this, we're gonna set the explode amount. I think I'm gonna set mine to just a one to show you. And you hit fracture mesh, and you can see it explodes like that. I think I'm just gonna set the explode amount down a little bit to 0.5 maybe. Fracture mesh, and you can see how it looks like that. Obviously, the bigger the explode amount, the bigger that goes out. I don't need it to be that high, so I'll set it to 0.5 like so. And then we're gonna save this and close it down. And we're gonna to want to drag in our destructible mesh from the content browser down here. So make sure it's underscore DM at the end for destructible mesh and just drag it into our level. I'm just gonna move it over here a bit and make sure it's flush to the ground. So it looks like it's sitting on the ground like so. And then with it selected, let's go into the details panel on the right over here and scroll down to physics. And we're gonna to want to simulate physics and have gravity enabled like so. And then still on the physics tab over here, we're gonna click this little arrow here to show advanced to give us more options. And then we're just gonna scroll back up and untick start awake like so. Meaning that gravity won't be enabled as soon as we start the game. You have to interact with it first before the physics is enabled. And then so we can shoot it with the first person bullet projectile, we're gonna go and open that blueprint. So go in content, first person BP, blueprints, and open up first person projectile, like so. And then we're gonna go down here and just right click and add force at location, because we wanna be using the force rather than the impulse. And you get collision component, it doesn't matter too much, because we're just gonna get rid of that reference. 
plug that into true there, and plug that into destroy actor, and then off of the get velocity, we'll plug that into the force, and the get to location, obviously in the location, like so. Hit compile, uh, yeah, and then also set the target as the other component, like so. And then hit compile, and there we are. Now we can close this, hit play, and if we go over to the box, we can walk into it, and eventually it will explode. Or if we shoot it, it will also explode. Obviously it's got a lot of damage, so we have to shoot it quite a bit, but it did explode eventually. Obviously you can change how much you need to do this, so if we just find this again and open it up, we can change the amount of damage it has. So let's set it down to 10,000, like so, let's save, hit play, shoot it again. Don't need to shoot it as much. I can also just increase the explode amount a bit, like so. Set this down to 5,000. Save and then play again. You just see you get different kinds. And obviously you just play around with this for however you like. You just get it perfect for you. You get the damage spread. Put it down. But yeah, you just play around with this to get the exact effect that you want to have like so and it should also work with gravity so if we just put it up a bit like so and then have it start awake hit play and see that it does break it lagged a little bit as it broke it came up but I think that's just because of how many that's just because the explode mine I've got on it and if we hit play have it break and we can wait for it to despawn we'll see that it will despawn between 5 and 15 seconds after it broke, meaning that if you have multiple of these, there won't be too many static meshes lagging out your game. And as you saw there, it just despawned. So I think that'll be it for this video. I've got to do everything I wanted to do. We have a destructible mesh, which you can break and explode like so. And again, you just change the effects for how you want it to look. And if you change the blueprint on the bullet projectile back to the impulse, you'll see that it acts slightly differently than the force. Move that back, hit compile, hit play, I'll also just move this back down like so. You see that it flies off into the wall and then explodes, which is why we have the force instead of impulse. But that'll be it for this video, so thank you for watching. I hope you found it helpful and hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.